welcome to the September 12th Northampton Energy and Sustainability Committee meeting. Um, this is recorded. It will be at Northampton Open Media um, as a record there. Um, so I'm going to start out as we usually do with public comment. Is there anybody in on this Zoom call um, that wants to make a public comment that's on an item not on the agenda? Right. I don't see anybody. So um, no public comments. I will move to the next item, which is review and approval of the minutes of August 8th. And we obviously need a vote and a decision about that. Did anybody have a chance to review the minutes? Move to okay. approve. Second. Rachel moves. Okay, was that Marissa or Louie that seconded? Might have been simultaneous. Okay. Mm -hmm. You, right. uh, Carolyn, one, this is her, one thing on the minutes in the Florence field array, it uh -huh. says potentially 7,500 per year, 7,500 what? Is, is, it, is it missing some kind of unit? Yes. Um, let me just pull that up. Yes. Josh, do you know? Yeah. <laughs> do you have it was, in front of you? That was a dollar amount. So the rate is dollars. So we can make that change in the final yep. record. So I have a motion by Rachel, second by Marissa with a clarification to add a dollar symbol to that 7,500. Um, and I'm gonna do a roll call vote because we're on Zoom. So going down my list, Ben, Isle. Yes, yes. There. Eric Winkler. Approve. Louis Hesbrook. Yes. Marissa Elkins. Yes. Matt McCarthy. Yes. Rachel Maori. Yes. Tim Smith. Yes. Angie Gregory. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, thank you all. Moving right along. So on that note, we'll move into the Florence Field Array replacement modem. Um, Josh, do you have an update on that? Um, so I just wanted to check in again and say that I had uh, checked in with the contractors and they said that the installation would probably be in late September, but still pending because as we know, most of the solar contractors in the area are very busy. Um, and there are no 5G modems on the market to their knowledge. So I checked in with them about that. Um, so still scheduled in um, and they'll be installing that in uh, late September pending when they reach out and they'd have a crew available. Great, thanks for that update. Any other comments on that? Okay. Um, Looks like Ben, were you having trouble with your other sign-in? Uh -oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oz. Are you good? All right. So I, I was walking across campus, so I was by phone, and and now I'm in my office. So. Okay. Great. <laughs> Thanks. Um, great. Okay, let's move on to the next item. Um, the inflation, re eh, inflation Reduction Act. Um, that's you, Ben. Came in to your office just in time. <laughs> Do you want to launch in? I mean, so understand that what I have is questions, not answers. Um, and it may be that that, that I'm, I'm wrong, but when I looked at uh, one of those links that you sent along, I, I shared with you guys was um, 
th that I think it was more more than a third, so somewhat less than half of the money available in Massachusetts has not been allocated um, from a, a number of different sources. So there's Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which is obviously new. And then the question is like, how do we participate? How do we uh, help a lot of the private sector actors in Northampton participate if that's a thing we wanna do? Um, and, but then there was also funds, uh, ESSER funds, fund, funds left over from, uh, from the, the various COVID recovery federal monies that have not been allocated, as far as I could tell from that website. Um, and so I guess partly it's a question to you guys in city government who may know more about what we've done to access it. But like, if you're looking at the the Leeds Elementary School problem of how, how do we provide ventilation for the steam half of the school and how do we do a conversion? Well, that would be a nice source of money, um, <laughs> potentially. Uh, so so that that's it's really just more of a question of like, oh my God, there's all this money and Massachusetts gets it, why not us? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, you know, obviously I haven't, I don't know, if Pat, you've looked with any of the consultants at some of this, um, for the school projects at all? Um, um, no. Okay. Um, I do know there, there are tax credits you can also get, a, a city, uh, municipalities can, get the tax credits. I don't know how they work, but. Oh. And is that through the Inflation Reduction Act? Yes. And the cities can take a tax credit despite the fact that we a city doesn't pay taxes to anyone, does yeah. it? Yeah, the, the IRS, I don't know what they did, but they made uh, some change in the IRS code where municipalities can actually get the tax credit. I don't know if it comes in the, you know, in the form of a payout to the city. I don't know how it works. <laughs> I, I think we should try to take advantage of it, but <clears throat> yeah. Uh, to my knowledge, I mean, we're Pat and I are going to look into the tax credit side of things to see how that actually works. Um, it's my understanding that you get a similar type of payout um, from the IRS as a nonprofit or um municipal entity similar to how they're doing the um, the EV tax credits um, where they're actually giving people money instead of tax credit because most people who are applying for these wouldn't get the full benefit. Um, in regards to the other money that is available, it's my understanding that the federal government gave money to be used for certain um, certain uses and then is letting the states decide how to allocate that money. So the way that I would see, the only way that I could see that the city would have anything to do with that is if we pushed our representatives to allocate that money and then applied for it actively. Um, because if the state doesn't have a mechanism for us to acquire that money, then it just kind of sits there. Um, it That happens in New Hampshire where I was before. Um, there was this pot of money just sitting for years because the state just decided that it wasn't worth allocating. And that was the, some of the COVID funds. Um, so a long way of saying uh, the state has to allocate the money to us for us to be able to even access it. And if there's no pathway for that, then we can't access it. It doesn't matter how much money is sitting there. Is that something, do you think the um, DOER has, that it has been allocated in some way that they might be able to provide us with that um, information, or do you think it just hasn't been allocated? Um, it's DOER, right? I don't think DOER would be the allocator. I think it might be, um, well, I know that some of it went through DESI, like it was a lot of it for education stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why I was thinking of the school as an application for it. Yeah. 
I mean, there is there is a decent amount of money that is that has been allocated that hasn't been used, which I think that then you you mentioned. So stuff where it was given a purpose and either the program has been slow to accept applications or there haven't been that many applications or the for some reason or another cities haven't applied to it as much or maybe the cities that have applied to it have already gotten their grants and it just has kind of fallen on the back burner um, and that would be something to to look into you know application pathways that exist that we can jump on to to get that in um and i think it's definitely worth looking into that and that would be us talking with doer or whoever at the state would know about these programs to give mm -hmm. us an inside foot to apply um because right now the only ones that are actively accepting are the more public ones i think mm -hmm. uh, and me myself carolyn pat could probably work on that Um, yeah, so I mean, maybe that's maybe all the that's where this ends. It's just this is a flag to say this that we should look at that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to look through the letter here, but but um, I know that uh, Adele and Denise have their hands up. Um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and let Adele go first. Oh. Okay, Adele. Um, well, I might be saying the same thing that Denise was going to say, <laughs> uh, which is that um, there is a Westfield State University event on September 27th, which is supposed to be all about um, federal incentives. And um, that would be a really good question to um, ask the presenters um, about, perhaps in advance, um, and I also second Josh's suggestion that we contact our representatives. Thank you. Okay, so that wasn't what I was going to say. So um, I have been attending um, these uh, meetings uh, of a group called the Building Electrification Accelerator, which is primarily Eastern Massachusetts communities. And it's generally representatives of the town. This would be great if Joshua, you wanted to start participating in these because these are sustainability directors or um, uh, town managers and often climate activists um, that are, uh, and a lot of their discussions are around these kinds of monies that are available um, to cities and towns. And there have been some changes. One thing is that, uh, and I'm not sure about the particular, this particular program, Ben, but um, but many of these um, programs, particularly within the Inflation Reduction Act, started out being um, tax um, rebates, uh, and, and they were really only available to the um, contractors, and then they would have to figure out some way to credit the cities or towns or whatever. And now my understanding is that there is a more direct way to access these um, benefits. But at any rate, there is a ton of information available online from this group um, already, just sort of, you know, in a Google Drive. But um, these meetings, which happen quarterly, and then there are subgroups to this meeting that also meet like um, monthly, they uh, there is a great sharing of information about how people are dealing with their school buildings and um, school buses and um, housing programs. So it, it, I really recommend people to um, uh, use this as a good source of information. Um, can you say the, the name of that again? Yeah, and I can send you um, the link um, to the group. So it's um, run by, um, oh gosh, my brain, I'm going to blank on I think it's Lisa Cunningham no nope, that's wrong um uh and um Ann Wright um I'm blanking building, the building electrification accelerator right but who's the other person Adele besides or a, or a Weisbord or a Weisbord thank you and um yeah and so uh yeah uh, they're very good at moderating and coming up with great speakers who are um, often people in the um, uh, um, building um, uh, arena. And um, so it's, it's, 
it's a really useful source of information. And, and it, you know, people ask each other questions. They talk about the problems that they're having. And so a lot of clarification happens through this group. So Great. Thank you. Yeah, so it could be something that I, I would like to join, trying to get as much information about what other uh, municipalities in the area have been doing so that we can um, know which avenues to take. Yeah, and it's all Massachusetts. So whatever is happening in Massachusetts is what they're focused on. Okay, great. Um, so there, there's also another category. So like, you know, it's, it's it, I, I think when we look at kind of like, how can the city get money? We're often thinking of like money for the city to do something itself like with its own properties and with its own stuff. But it most of the IRA money is basically going to, uh, I'll just say, red states with lower labor costs uh, to build battery factories and EV uh, charger factories. And like, there's a lot of money <laughs> going to grow the economies in certain places that definitely happy for them to grow their economies. Um, and we have a big uh, vacuum that's about to appear. Uh, in the form of Coca-Cola. Uh, and I was, this is really just kind of like speculation thoughts for the group, that, you know, like what, what people think about how could we attract a company that is basically designed to take IRA money, uh, you know, to take take funding to start up, to use that large space uh, and that, that large uh, economic hole in, in our in our city that's coming. Yeah, I think that that's a good idea. I mean, a lot of the funds are, like you said, allocated for private business, um, as long as they're, you know, meeting certain criteria. Um, so it could be a good way to infuse the city with new, both, you know, employees and tax revenue and, you know, so, so what are the mechanisms that the city currently has available to attract uh, investment, essentially? Uh, to, uh, how, how does it do that? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I think if you're talking about Coca-Cola right now, as far as I know, the last time I understood, um, they were in charge. Um, or wanted to have that sort of control about how they marketed that property in particular and um, what the plan would be after they leave. I don't know if that's still the same, the status is the same, the um, economic development, that piece of economic development comes out of the mayor's office. Um, there are other properties that, you know, are, you know, we have more than that as a vacant or future vacant property. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, I don't know that um, the city, you know, in some big cities, there are people who are actively out there sort of pitching Northampton to large companies because that's the only job they have, right? Mm -hmm. um, we don't necessarily have that kind of economic development, but it would be, it is interesting to sort of think about um, you know, how we put together pieces. I mean, some of it's through, we can lean on mass development um, at the state level as sort of the quasi public, but um, potential um, entity that um, connects businesses um, with municipalities. Um, they do some of that and we are we have a program in Northampton that's um, um, you know expedited permitting sections where we're trying to focus development and that's through sort of mass development arm we're on that so we sort of have this broad we've we're posted on the mass development web page as sort of city of Northampton participates in this so that we sort of essentially get ourselves out there in the world when companies are looking for places to locate. So that is um, sort of a constant in the background. But I think connecting those dots and maybe 
trying to target particular types of industry um, is more what I'm hearing you saying. And is there a way, because we have this money here for private interest, is there a way that we can more um, adequately bill ourselves as sort of interested in um, engaging with those kinds of companies? Um, so, you know, we can internally certainly have a conversation with the mayor's office about how we might go about doing that. Um, what are some of the different entities at the state level where we can um, get that um, piece of our sort of ethos out there to pitch to um, those companies looking to locate? Um, yeah. Okay, so well, I guess since we're an advisory <laughs> board, I guess we, we, we might be uh, subtly advising. <laughs> that might be worth uh, looking into. Yeah. I don't know that we need to do it subtly. We Okay. I, I feel like I feel like we can say, have you yeah. thought about this? Here's a, here's the thing. Yep. I know that there are a number of flow battery companies. And so this is getting very in the weeds and too specific, probably, but they're most of them are being developed in Cambridge. And what Cambridge has is lots of brains and not a lot of space. Um, just saying. Uh, for, <laughs> flow batteries take up a lot of space, but for utility scale applications, that doesn't matter, right? You just, they're, they're, and we could get into that technology, but basically it's, it's a appropriate long-term energy storage technology for the grid that requires a warehouse size space. Um, do you have contact names at the <laughs> flow battery I companies? Yeah, I, I do know of, of some of these flow battery companies. Um, uh -huh. And I'm not saying that's the only technology, but it's the one yeah. that comes to mind. Yeah, um, I mean, Ben, not to put too fine a point on it, but if NESC and 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 your suggestion ended up being the source of of landing something like that, we would be the heroes forever. <laughs> it may be worth trying because, like, the downside is fairly small. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so um, I don't know if if I sh should I take that as an assignment to try to make some contacts with flow battery companies and see if there's any possibility of them wanting to install batteries here. And that does mean, and this is the, the other part of it, it um, understanding better, and I don't, uh, understanding better what we have for um, uh, grid connections right now, um, you know, in terms of like, uh, yeah, the, the ability to, to connect uh, high voltage, uh, large capacity, you know, is, would that be a limitation if, you're, if you had a, a company that was basically meant to take cheap electricity and put it onto the grid at periods of high demand? Um, um, can I add something, Caroline? Yeah. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, ideally for the Coca-Cola space, this is the ideal for the city, is if they use water, because that's where we're really going to be feeling yeah. huge, not just the, the space. So I don't know if battery, you know, uh, warehouses or companies know. Okay. So, I mean, that's fine. I mean, we might have, I mean, using the space is, a, you know, would be great. But I, if there's any kind of energy endeavor you can think of that uses a lot of water, <laughs> although really if it's an energy one, maybe they don't, you know, maybe they're, they're very efficient and they don't, but that's something to think about as well, because that's a part of the, the, the issue with the Coca-Cola, losing Coca-Cola is it's hurting our infrastructure for our water. On the other hand, if we have a high value business that is paying lots of taxes, that maybe we don't have to worry so much about backfilling the water plant. <laughs> yeah. Off. Or if a battery kombucha company, you know, or something like that. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't, I think I heard a question in there and I don't know as chair, if I have the prerogative to say, yes, I assign you that task, Ben. <laughs> um, but sure, if you want to um, name names to us, um, you know, um, we can start. And like you said, there's not much to lose, right? I mean, it's not a huge thing to lose. We just, um, you know, That's I think good. it's one step in sort of identifying ways to be attractive to those types of businesses. Right. And so I'd, I'd say the other side, so like, you know, I have a full-time job. So me as a, as a one-man development arm is probably not going to happen. Mm -mm. Um, but also like there are so many things that I can't think of and I'm not going to think of. Yeah. But echoing maybe what Marissa was hinting at is should this be an actual formal recommendation that the mayor create a task force or some, I, I don't know how we think about it, some way of formally and deliberately pursuing investors who can take advantage of IRA money for green technologies generally? You know, should we be, should we have some formal structural way to, to go pursue that? Yeah, I mean, I um, I think that makes sense to um, sort of talk that through a little bit more um, with the mayor's office. Yeah. Louis. So I wonder if there's a, anybody in the city um, knows about uh, what's available. I mean, we know the Coke plant and you can sort of, that's, that's the, the, elephant in the room, but how many other spaces are there available? And could we, when we start shopping around, I mean, we shop around a half million square, 11 acre uh, plant in really nice shape. That's pretty straightforward, but are there smaller places around and, ha and has anybody spent much time doing an inventory of, um, and so then, so that's, that's in the empty part, the new, the new, uh, New new companies coming to town, but what about people that are already here? Does you know is there a list of people by I don't know um, uh, property tax basis that we could? I mean, I'm wondering about uh, like Hampshire Property Management. Is there something in there that is there something that they might want to do? So how would we reach out to those kinds of people? Start at the top and work down. You mean tagging and seeing if there's there's space opportunity or if they have businesses that are looking to expand into sort of a new um, new sector. Both. Okay. Both. But I mean, physical physical facilities are are one of the things because of what I the way I look at the world. Physical the facilities are the things that I would notice and perhaps could provide a little bit of input on. I think it would be starting with a sit breakfast um, with a bunch of realtors. I mean, that would be maybe yeah. a way to go at it. It's, as we, difficult as that might be. I think we have a list of sort of larger um, properties that's in the mayor, out of the mayor's office, but they're also, you know, there's also sort of that, the people who have, plans in the future that we don't yet know about, like either mm -hmm. vacating space or moving, you know, swapping spaces that we may not be aware of that might be coming available. Um, so yes, that's a, you know, that's a good thought as well. Any other ideas on this topic? It sounds like um, we on the city side should do a little bit of work um, and then maybe come back to this committee um, after we've done some um, initial investigation. I guess I'd only add one other thing. Again, going back to kind of this idea of like the city's properties and so forth. Um, in a lot of, so a, a, there's a lot of IRA money for 
heat pumps and ground source heat pumps in particular. And so again, if Pat is correct, and there's this way for the city to directly take the tax credits, which I think is how the, the money comes, then that might open up possibilities that were basically unaffordable for a lot of the like schools and so, and so forth. Um, and if it's not true that the city can take the tax credits directly, is there a way that the city could partner with some entity that has a large tax liability um, to essentially get that entity to finance, whether it's for a city project or let's say you've found a collection of, of real estate properties that could operate together and you know and and work with uh, some entity that that could do these things. Like it's very long scale, you know, thinking ahead sort of stuff, but. Are either of those things things we should think about? I don't know what the, I mean, I think that's a good question. Um, once we get the CAPA department fully seated, to probably sit down and, and put our heads together around sort of what makes sense in like, you know, who is best suited to sort of look at that and think about, think more deeply about that, for sure. Any other comments on this item? Ben, do you wanna launch into the permit process um, topic that you um, wanted to discuss? It's also just a question. Um, okay. I don't know. So what I read is that permitting can add time and uh, and expense to rooftop solar. And that it's one of the reasons why we get people not adopting rooftop solar who might have done so, um, either because it costs more or because they lose interest by the time the permitting is, is possible. It's more of a question maybe for Louis, like, is that even true here in Northampton? And if it is, uh, should has anyone taken a look at this kind of streamlined application process that NREL has created? Can I ask you, Ben, do you, are you, from what you read, you're just saying generally in the outer sphere, that's what you're reading, can be an issue? Or are you reading it uniquely about Northampton? I'm, no, I'm reading it about, say, essentially, the, the, the way I'd put it is the reason that Australia has, like everybody has rooftop solar, is because they have streamlined this process. And it really is actually the cheapest way. Like, it's just so cheap that nobody doesn't do it. And here, Rooftop solar is pretty expensive compared to say utility scale solar. And a big portion of that, according to what I read about US, not about Northampton specifically, is, uh, is uh, soft costs, is all these things like permitting and so forth. Well, I, I mean, I, I'll take a crack and then Louis, feel free to chime in. But we've, from, um, a regulatory standpoint, it's pretty straightforward to do rooftop solar. It's allowed everywhere. So there's not any holdup of review to determine if something is allowed in one place or another. And then it be, just becomes a building permit <clears throat> review. But I have, from what I understand relative to other jurisdictions in the Commonwealth, as well as the country, we have pretty quick turnaround for permits. Um, so I can't imagine, and of course I'm not in the, I'm the regulator, I'm not sitting in the seat of the <laughs> installer, but um, you know, what is it? 21 days max to turn around a building permit or electrical permit, um, Louis? Or, and for particularly if it's, a, if it's an existing structure, it's, it's really a no brainer, I think. So in 2000, and I think 13 or 14, we revised our, our solar permitting process and where Northampton is very cheap. 
two, two permits, uh, a $75 electrical permit and a $75 building permit. Um, one thing on, on new houses, it's easy because all the structural information is available on existing houses. There is a requirement that you can demonstrate that the roof will hold up the panels. It's not, um, and that can be a little bit burdensome, but there's a lot of, um, the solar companies have, have sort of captive um, engineers and mm -hmm. they email them the dimensions of the framing lumber and the spacing and, and, and we get then an email back, but our, our commitment is a week on solar turnaround and on a, new, on a new house, it's like right away, it comes in, it gets looked at, it gets stamped, it gets sent out because it's easy and um and with the uh commercial ground and the and the larger ground mount there's another a different formula but it's also a whole lot more um it runs off a spreadsheet and it's uh modeled on i think uh, one of the san francisco bay area communities which was um focused on developing an expedited process and we did that in quite a while ago, 10 years ago, um, um, during Solarize Northampton and that whole Solarize piece. So I think we're in good shape. Um, I can't speak for some towns on the other side of the river. <laughs> I will say, you know, it's different, the rooftop and ground mount. So we have different standards. And so in that case, we, you know, you're, whether or not you're just allowed to go straight to building permit or you have to go through a public hearing process is based upon how big your array is. And um, a lot of that has to do with wanting to sort of encourage efficiency and focusing on, you know, not just putting up the biggest array you can without first sort of um, reducing your out, your, your, you know, um, insulation and your um, energy use and waste. And so there may be a conversation that comes up um, in the near future about whether we need to lift that number because of the total L, um, number of elements or features that people are trying to plug into their um, house. But I think that's the only thing where you might see some some pushback or complaints from people about the timing and the cost is that it adds another, um, you know, maybe two months to a review process if you have to go through the public hearing process. But that's just for a ground mount system that's considered accessory to a home or a business um, that it is in excess of, um, I think the standard now is 12 K KW. Okay. That sounds like it's a non-issue. I just, I, I was curious to see if if this NREL solar app would streamline things even more. But it sounds yeah. sounds like a non-issue. One thing I'm noticing is the cost of solar is is staying pretty much the same. I mean, I think that how much it costs to get, um, say, nine panels put on your roof um, ten years ago, it's the same money as it was now, which um, without, you know, so it hasn't been necessarily affected by inflation and you're getting half again or almost uh, twice as much out of the panels that are getting put up now as as were 10 years ago. So, um, I mean, rooftop solar is a pretty good bargain, um, although there's a long payback time. Um, right. I, I guess, I mean, I haven't done the analysis and, and I don't know about Northampton in particular, which is, you know, the only thing we can affect. Uh, you know, if you're paying the same per KW, if that, you know, if the cost per, 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 per watt or whatever is the same 10 years later, then that's a problem because the panel cost per watt has dropped considerably over those 10 years. No, well, no, I think I'm, I'm, th I'm talking about how much money you give the guy and he puts nine panels on your roof and it's about the same as it was in 2013, but the nine panels you're getting up there 
are uh, half again or two thirds again more output. Right. Panels cost less, but the inflation over the labor and you know all the ancillary materials um, is sort of almost got eaten up by the the drop in the panel cost. That's it. I um, had a conversation with somebody from Northeast Solar not very long ago about about their cost of you know the cost average cost per job that they're doing. Oh, right. <laughs> um, okay, so we're good on solar panels. Um, and then, did we already, was your, Ben, do you think that we sort of merged the conversation about ARPA, is that ARPA funds um, for a school with the previous um, line that was identified in the agenda for you? I, I think so. I, I mean, yeah. it's, it's really... A, I mean, basically, I'd love to get together with Josh at some point when when we both have time and think about how to solve the ventilation and cooling problem. And, you know, and that's a big question about schools, including like what school buildings are in good shape and what which ones are not. And, you know, all of that. But again the 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 money for hvac upgrades should still be available depending on how you apply for it so that i guess that's just putting that out there all right thanks um next one counselor updates um this one is so um Marissa emailed me just before the beginning of the meeting. I just pushed that email to everybody um, about 45 minutes ago, so you may not have um, checked your email. But um, Marissa, you want to take it away for this item? Um, yes. Yeah, so um, Carolyn asked me a while back about um, authoring an op-ed that would come from NESC basically um, expressing support um, for uh, the, re the redesign Main Street project. Um, and I'm sure as you guys have begun to see, there's been some uh, a, a, a late, a late uh, rising, um, a little bit of a backlash or opposition to the project. Um, and I, th I don't want to speak for the mayor's office. Well, I'm sure Carolyn knows. I, I know that there is in the works um, some uh, uh, FAQ or you know some kind of something to put in the supporters' hands um, to to respond. Um, but um, this what I sent out was a draft. It is a very like literally I put the last period. <laughs> on um and it was it was also uh carolyn got me started with some some points and ideas so a it's very rough it's it's a rough draft but uh close i think um and i was hoping we could look at it and um if folks had thoughts about the points to be raised or if there's anything missing um from the discussion um that we could talk about it and then come up with a plan to to either authorize me to finish it up with with Carolyn's help um um or somebody else on the on the on the commission is is fine too um to so that we can push it out this week um would would be the goal um or in the if 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 we preferred if we wanted to put on a, a quick meeting sufficient to have a quorum to pass it formally we you know like um on Thursday or Friday, we'd have to post it. What is today? Tuesday? We'd have to post it tomorrow for Thursday or Wednesday. Yeah. Anyway, in time to post is the other option. Use a lot of words to explain that, but. <laughs> Do you want oh. me to screen share it or has anybody actually, has anybody had a chance to read it or uh, Marissa, do you want to um, uh, screen share would content? be yeah screen screen share I think would be a good day I I have it up too if you want to let me screen share or sure 
Um, yeah. Let me just um, hold on. Okay, you can do that. Where did it go? Um, there it is. I, uh, hmm. okay, I can give you guys a minute to look it over or how, just let me know how you want me to proceed. I would like to probably tracks again. <laughs> <laughs> just get rid of the cars. But the trolley was great. I thought about that when I was writing. I was just trying to start off with a, I, somebody in public comment the other uh, two meetings ago in council kind of framed it this way. And I thought it was very thoughtful. Um, so I'm not married to that as an example, uh, more as an example of how things have evolved. I'm not married to claiming it dangerous and terrible, I guess is what I would say. I like it. <laughs> Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, so I, I, I like the, the letter a lot. So this would be, the, the intention would be to publish this in the, the Gazette. Um, so it seems like it's got kind of two parts, right? One is basically the, the design aspect and the other is the process aspect. Um, which is kind of responding to the the two criticisms that are complaints that that you hear in in the letters to the Gazette and all that, which is about there was no process, which is you know kind of ridiculous, and and then kind of speculating about uh, about dangers, most of which were addressed. Like somebody brought up every single one of these speculations about dangers, and then they were addressed as part of the process. Um, so it, because it's kind of got these two parts, um, I guess I'm trying to think about who is the audience and what, what is the purpose of this letter? Um, and what's the importance of having Nesk do it as opposed to Marissa Elkins doing it? it has everybody read, can I stop share? I, yeah, I, I, can I make a comment, Carol? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I'm kind of on the same thinking that Ben is here. I think this commission probably would be better, um, be better off not getting into the fray of the process. And, um, you know, if providing some kind of support that is consistent with energy and sustainability 
I, I think it's that's that's the domain of the commission. Um, so I'm a little. I, I think if we can spin this support to, um, you know, reflect what energy or what environmental benefits directly will result from this change, that that's something that this commission, I think, is in a position to comment on. Um, is it going to reduce vehicle traffic? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, there'll be less parking spots downtown if I understand correctly. So that is in theory going to, going to do that. Um, not that there aren't sufficient to make up for the loss of spots downtown. Um, but I, I would be more supportive of something that really, you know, reflects our particular, um, focus which is energy and the environment and sustainability. And, and clearly uh, having a viable um, downtown is important for sustainability in the city. There's, there's no question about that. Um, but I, I wonder if we could find the pieces of the proposal that focus on, on those things and, and, uh, and um, offer our support for those particular things in, in moving this forward. So you're suggesting um, sort of this then was um, identifying two pieces being process and design to focus potentially more on the design components that um, fit within the mission of the um, of NESC. And I mean, I think we've talked um, so I think that's what I, I'm hearing you say, but let me know if that's not right. That, that is what I'm saying. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and I think we've um, talked a lot about the transportation component and that transportation is obviously the um, one of the biggest, um, you know, of our, the sectors that we really um, need to crack. Um, and so to the extent that, um, you know, we're creating a transportation network that is um, designed to accommodate all users and not just focused on the one um, or more heavily, much more heavily weighted towards um, vehicle traffic, um, then we can, I, I think, start to sh make that shift and encourage more people. So do we know exactly the numbers of the people that might make that shift? I'm not sure that really matters. What we've decided as a community is that we need to make sure we're creating space so that people have the option of making that shift. So, um, but I could certainly um, see uh, um, supporting and focus more on, on sort of those elements that are vital for the city and including economic development too, because the, that component is critical for the success um, in going into the future of our community. I mean, that's the, that's the heart of our, of Northampton. And we want to make sure that um, it's inviting and successful, but of course I'm biased. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll stop there. Uh, well, and I will say, and I, and I actually agree with this, um, uh, Eric and, and Ben in the sense that like, I, I got it with, um, you know, I got, uh, a starting point from from Carolyn and I really actually did try to um sort of not focus on so much because there are more there are other things I would say about the economic development part of it and there are other things I would say about um uh the um other things but I also did find myself feeling like it was difficult to not address the the claims about process um so and so this is what I would say is like I don't know how you guys want to approach it I'm I'm going to put this letter in anyway. Like, I mean, if, if any SC doesn't want to, and, and I don't take that personally, I don't, you know, like, I, um, I also think that if any SC wants to, to put something forward, um, that more closely, I mean, the, the, the only thing I would say is, is that some of those points, you know, like I would have to like kind of massage them back out, um, so that it wouldn't be redundant. Of of a of a of another letter, but um, I I think based on this, I I can imagine a way to 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 focus it, 
you know, much more closely on, uh, um, or, and I could talk to Carolyn a little bit more about, about that. And I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to, to work with Caroline on, on writing something more specifically focused. I just need y'all to tell me what to do. <laughs> ben, do you want to? Yeah, I'm going to tell Marissa what to do. So <laughs> what, I, what, I, what I really want to say is I think the end part, particularly the part of the process where you say we had an election that was partly about this. You were elected specifically. Yeah, and, and I've had, yeah, and I agree that that's not necessarily an NESC thing to say. So I. Yeah, but I think it's so powerful and, and courageous because I, have, I understand, like, I mean, it's it's clearly political and it does, you know, I mean, this process thing has become political um, and there's a there's a threat. And so I think there's a lot of power in you taking your position and saying, look, here was the process and here, here are the reasons that I supported the plan and then was elected based in part on how I articulated that. That to me is, is powerful. And then, uh, and, and courageous. And, and I just, I just, I really like that, that part of it. Um, and then as Eric was saying, we actually have a lot of things that Nesk should say that's, that's about why this is good for the city, both from a sustainability point of view and from a financial point of view. And like, here we are as, you know, advi an advisory board saying here that, you know, we could go through these elements. Um, I mean, quite frankly, road bed, wide road bed is expensive to build and expensive to maintain. <laughs> uh, it, you know, permeable uh, spaces are lower cost. The best investment basically that any city can make is in street trees, just in, in terms of, of increasing value of properties, all, all that stuff. And that's something where, you know, so, so like um, uh, 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 Richard has an expertise, like we have various aspects of expertise in, in each area. Um, and that might be an interesting way to say, look, here, here, here are the people who are participating in the city and there are these areas that they look at. And here's how this answers to all of their uh, areas. It'd be a, a different kind of letter, but I don't know if that makes sense to people. Has anybody ever been to um, Houston? Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a street, Live Oak Street, that has um, solar panels mounted along the sidewalk. They're, they're ground mounted. They're about eight feet in the air. Um, let's put that in the letter. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's, let's the city put its money where its mouth is and, and, you know, build a, build a, you know, build a street scene that really in, um, incorporates climate, you know, climate change. Although, although the design is, is, it's done. <laughs> I know. I'm just saying. I, it, 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 it made me think about that that trip. There's a great Mexican restaurant right around there too. Um, um, but yeah, I mean that's I mean that's the kind of thing that you know. Those, that's what I would focus on from this commission is is you know how do we how do we reflect our our mission and goals in in supporting this and you know I'm personally support it because it's time I ride my bike through downtown pretty much every day and um, it's always an exciting adventure well I know that um, Ben has already written written one um, but uh, I, I guess I, 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 I maybe Ben and I could get together and and uh, craft something uh, more specifically from NESC. I'm I'm certainly willing to try and help with that. If, if, um, at the risk of um, 
I know we don't want to add an extra meeting. Well, I, I guess I would ask what, how do folks feel about um, reconvening for a, a quick meeting as soon as we have it done and, and can adequately post something um, to, to approve it? I'm willing to work on on this through the through the end of the week and um and over the weekend if necessary um if we could get together a, a quick quorum at when it's done. I do it. I I support I support that. I'd also help with crafting language. Do we um, have an open meetings problem if we do that? Um, uh, we, what's, what's the total number of the commission? Um, well, you, I mean, you're just an ad hoc, um, to, you know, three members, the total member is, I'm uh, sorry. Um, so we're just missing rich. Um, uh, so we've got 11, I think we're 11 total. Yeah. Um, so if Ben and Eric and I wanted to work on it, we would not be in violation. Okay. And then we could just, I mean, I don't know if we can get a commit, since we have so many folks here today, um, whether we, actually it looks like um, Rachel dropped. So we actually, so, um, you know, we could set up a, um, I don't know if you wanna do like a 15 minute meeting on Monday or something like that, that and at a time or whatever works for people. I mean, just throwing out just the concept more than the day and the time. Um, and then as long as we posted it, um, then um, you all can make a decision and we just need a quorum of people to make a decision. I think for me, a deadline is always good. So if we set a meeting and we posted it, I would, I would meet that deadline just barely. <laughs> Clearly, four fifty nine <laughs> or three fifty nine. Sorry. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I may be teaming up with people who are are, are better at that than me, but. <laughs> um. So, what is um? Um. I'm just looking at the calendar for next week. I don't know if I, if it's. It, does anybody have um? um any time monday the 18th to meet for 15 minutes yeah i can uh, i can do that yeah. do like a 4 30 meeting sure is that better for people what um later one? in the afternoon like a quick what? 4 30 meeting sure yeah, I, I'll, I'll have to leave out of one meeting, but since it'll probably just be a really quick, like, yes or no sort of thing, and then we can leave. Okay. Sure. And we'll just need a, a quorum, you know. Yeah. Although we want everybody's input. We value everybody's. <laughs> um, uh, in which case, I am not going to send my, uh, col my column back around um, to you guys. I will consider myself authorized to write my own column. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I can, so um, what we can do, Josh, would you be able to post a, an agenda? You know, we can just post it tomorrow for Monday at 4.30 um, with a Zoom link. Um, and then that can be set. We don't have to worry about that. Um, Okay. Um, are there any other counselor updates? Okay. Rachel left. Um, any department head reports? Anything? Pat? Louis? Um, yes. Um, I'm very relieved to announce that the uh, Boiler sections for the Forbes Library were actually delivered today. Uh, the old boiler has been removed um, and um, the city council approved the funding. Thank you, councilors, last Thursday. Uh, it is um, 
this crisis, mini crisis has been a poster child for teamwork. Um, from the very beginning, when this came up in and uh, beginning of August, everyone uh, jumped on board. Um, Bill Towsley, the mechanical engineer, uh, checked in every week uh, and, and did phone calls when he was on vacation. Ben Weil uh, did all the calculations along with Josh and, and Bill and the contractor. Um, I gotta give a shout out to Josh uh, Singer, um, who else? Uh, Katie Deppin in my department, Jason Petson, uh, who, uh, had a lot of historical knowledge that was beneficial. Um, I'm afraid I'm gonna forget somebody. <laughs> um, Are you gonna raise up your award? Say what? All right, the Oscars, it's like the Oscars. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I feel like, yeah, the, the music is about to play and I'm gonna, uh, but anyways, um, I'm, I'm very relieved that the, uh, you know, uh, the heat will hopefully be running by October 15th. Uh, you know, the, everyone stepped up. The industrial uh, steel uh, and boiler, uh, we don't even have a signed contract and they have all the materials in the warehouse. The boiler was delivered today. Everything has been really proactive and everyone has been very helpful. Will Coffee, the procurement officer was pivotal in getting uh, you know, kind of a, it wasn't officially an emergency waiver, but the go ahead from the state to not have to bid this, that it was a bit of an emergency. So everything has worked out and we're on path for a new boiler that eventually, hopefully will be converted to a hot water boiler. Uh, and we can get the steam out of that building sometime in the near future. Josh, do you have anything to add? I don't think so, thank okay. you. Great, a bit of oh, good yeah. news. Yeah, very good news. Yeah. Um, I don't think I really have any updates either. So I guess that brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, any other comments from folks before we adjourn? Okay, 